welcome to another edition of Star Foodies. And as always, viewers, you probably know this by now, I'm full of surprises. And today, I am filming in a pretty amazing community center in Etobicoke called the Jean Augustine Youth Center that empowers girls age 7 to 17. Basically, what they do here is some amazing after-school programs, which is essentially part of a large charity. Now, I'm filming here today because Liberty Silver, who is our star foodie of the day, actually runs some singing programs here after school. So it is a great honor for me to have Liberty as our star foodie of the day. Additionally, I found out some pretty amazing things about Liberty when I was researching for this interview. Did you all know that Liberty Silver co-wrote the anthem for the Olympic Games in Georgia in 1996, as well as the anthem for the Olympic Games in Athens, Greece in 2004? Yep, that's true. She was also part of Tears Are Not Enough. She's won a Grammy. She's won June knows she's worked with David Foster she's worked with Bob Marley so this is going to be an amazing star foodies episode of course at the very end Liberty's going to tell us what she loves to eat cook and of course her secret favorite recipe stay right here star foodies audiences because very shortly we're about to meet and chat with Liberty Silver Liberty Silver I am so happy Hi, to be with you today welcome you? I'm you look amazing. Oh, so do you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've read so much about you and heard so much about you mm -hmm. that I was thinking, oh my God, when I start this interview, I don't know where to start. Right. But um, I do want to start by saying congratulations on a, an amazing career. Thank you. And Thank you. talking about highlights, I want to go through mm -hmm. some of your highlights. I know that as a teenager, you sang with Bob Marley right. at Madison Square Garden. Right. What was that like? It was amazing. It was pretty amazing. I just left Peterborough. Uh, for the weekend, and I ended up swimming in my sister's pool in Toronto, and somebody heard me, and they said, I know a band that needs a singer, can you do it? And I said, yes, and 12 hours later, um, we drove to New York City, and I opened up for Bob Marley at Madison Square Gardens at the age of 12. The age of 12. Yeah. So were you growing up thinking, I am going to be the world's greatest jazz singer? I, You know what? I used to come home after school, and my father was a first-string uh, violin player in the symphony and he had tons of records so I used to make up songs and I used to look at the wall and pretend of, I had thousands of fans and I was in a huge stadium. Yeah. So I just manifested what was my inner potential, Absolutely. not realizing it and just went forward with what I felt was right. You let your cork flow. Yep. I like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> On a good bottle of wine. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. So like, I, I know that you co-write music and you co-wrote something so spectacular that right. I'm going to tell audiences in a little bit but do you hear melodies? Yes. Okay. I go to sleep, I hear them, and I wake up and I'll write a song. Or just, if I hear chords, I'll know exactly what to put where and when. And what inspires you? Life. Being able to breathe, bringing sunlight, people, hurt, pain even. Some of the best songs get Junos. Right. And I got one of them with a very of painful course. song. Of course. But it's also healing too. So everything and everybody, like once you're alive and you, you know, the breathing trees, the whispering leaves, yeah. like everything around me inspires me. I listen to nature, I listen to self, I listen to others. Are you still writing right now? Absolutely, all the time. And you never stop. You never stop. Yeah. Do you ever write something and you give it away to somebody who think, you know what, this is better suited for them or I want them to sing? Yeah, it? but it's still a part of me. Like yeah. the first time I heard my um, song on a radio, I was like, oh, Oh my God, now everybody knows I was hurt. Oh my God, it's very, it's a vulnerable moment. Yeah. But I don't mind sharing, I love sharing, and I've written for a lot of really great singers and yeah. people, and I love doing that. So you are a Juno Award winning, Grammy Award winning, we have to talk about Tears Are Not Enough. Yeah. What a staple that was for that us That was a here. great, I was working at a club called The Blue Note at the time, yeah. and there was a big controversy because there was no African American or African Canadian people representing oh, okay. the, uh, the cause, which was, uh, famine relief in Ethiopia. So I'm sitting there, and I have a policy when I'm sitting in a club, no matter how many people are there, yeah. you sing like you're in front of a stadium. Sure. So that's what I did, and lo and behold, in the second front row seat was David Foster. And he oh. said, if anybody's gonna be in my video, you're gonna be in my video. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> I didn't know who he was. So a couple days later, I showed up at the studio, and everybody who was anybody was there, and it was uh, it was a fabulous experience. Have you worked with him since? No, but we were supposed to do a gig and got canceled. He goes, I owe you one. So whenever I bump into him, I go, don't forget you owe me one. <laughs> Is there another artist who you really want to work with? Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Stevie Wonder, old school. I'm an old school girl. I grew up listening to a lot of him because in Peterborough, Ontario, you couldn't get a lot of music that was 
urban or African or Afro uh, based. So I grew up listening to him and emulating him. So when people say, say oh wow, you have a unique sound, it's because I listen to a lot of male singers, but okay. definitely Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about something that you did that for me was super spectacular. And mm -hmm. I want you to explain to audiences how this happens. So okay. you co-wrote the Olympic anthem in the 1996 Atlanta Georgia Games right. and for the 2004 Athens yes. Greece Games. So Yay. first of all, how does that happen? Did they approach you? No. Well, it was I. I wrote, co-wrote. I bumped into a girl named Sylvia Sweeney, who was Oscar Peterson's niece. Okay. And she said, "I need you to help me write this song." And I said, "Okay." And it was for the World Champ Basketball Championship game. So we did that for that. And then the OSA, the Olympic Committee, said, "We love this song. It's great." But before that, Amway heard it okay. of Canada and said, "We love this song. We want you to do this song for our people." So we said, "Okay," because it was called "Be the Best That You Can Be." Okay. And they sold. They sent us a really big check. And Sylvie's like, "What do you want to do?" <laughs> you want to get paid or you want to reinvest? I go, no, let's reinvest. So the Olympic Committee heard it and they said, we want the song. So we put it out as an official Olympic CD oh, with all different kinds of people um, on it, all different kinds of Canadian artists. Incredible. And it was an amazing experience. And that's what led to the next thing. So it's good to invest in your future. And you say it so humbly, like, yeah, I wrote the, the song, like co-wrote the song. Like, yeah. it, it, it's so spectacular when I read about that. And as you may or may not know, but the entire first season I filmed in Greece. Okay. Wow. So, <laughs> so earlier we were chatting about your experience. I want you to right. tell us a little bit about what, was it, what it was like in Greece for you. It was amazing. I loved Greece. I did. Every day when we finished um, going over the scripts and stuff, I would drive 20 minutes to the Mediterranean and swim and eat from a little Greek restaurant by the sea, and that was my favorite time. There was no dogs there, and I'd heard there's a million dogs, yeah. and one of the dog advocates told me that they anesthetized them, so that was kind of, I said, okay, okay. yeah, all right. Um, I loved the food, I loved the people. It was so much fun, I had so much fun there, and I had the experience of staying afterwards for the Special Olympics, okay. and, a lot, and I was representing Diabetes Canada. So important. And a lot of the athletes had diabetes, and I was rooming with a blind athlete. So we went out on the street in Greece, and she said, come on, let's go, and I'm like, okay, wait, where's your cane? I don't need it. And we went out on the street, and I lost her, I couldn't find her, I was like, where are you, where are you? And she tapped me on my back shoulder, she goes, I'm right here. And at that point, I realized that people with a disability are only that because we view them as that. And they go forward with their lives despite yes. how disabled they are or we think they are right. and live their life as normally as possible. Yeah. So I said, we're the ones who are disabled. And I got a new respect, a whole new respect and love for working with all different kinds of people. Yeah. So you're big on charities, and here yeah, we are. This is your huge. suggestion for us to be here today yes. at Jean Augustine, the Community yes, Center. Yes, yes. Empowerment for girls. I am with you on that. Yes. I, I and can they start from age enough. five to twelve. How amazing! So if you get them early, then you then they'll go on to do. Uh, amazing what's your things. connection with this specific center? Well, I teach a program out of here called Sing, oh. and I teach from three from five year olds all the way up to fifteen year olds, and I usually do three to seven four different classes during the day and I teach them how to sing and how to work their voice and then I make them pick a song and then they work in groups then I have them song write and one of the little girls goes how come you make me sing I don't want to sing I said well if you're not afraid to sing then you won't be afraid to be president or prime minister or you can do anything you possibly want because once you stand in front of somebody and you get over that fear as a young person then you're not afraid you gain confidence self-esteem and it works every time uh, I'm gonna bring you back into food now I okay. know we talked a little bit about the food in Greece. So being a singer, I've always wanted to know, do you eat before you go on stage? Do I can eat any time. That? That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> <laughs> or the good thing. Yeah, it that's the good thing. I can eat any time, yeah. But sometimes I don't and sometimes I do. It depends on how I feel, but yeah. I'm pretty good with that. And I've been doing it for so long that I know if I'm, if, like, I'm, I don't really get nervous before I go on. Yeah. It's after. It's like, what do I do? Because oh, yeah. I go into the state of like utopia and I'm singing and I'm feeling and, and I'm, I'm, I'm a conduit at that person okay. at that point. So what I do is when I come off, then I'll eat. Oh, okay. like, let's go to eat. Yeah. 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 I don't eat before I film either. I like to do it after. Yeah. It's something yeah. pleasurable with Yeah. It's like friends. a celebration too. Yeah. Are you cooking at home? I cook all the time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't eat off the street. <laughs> I know that sounds wrong, but I don't eat from every hand. 
um, only because of that's how I feel spiritually. Like I, if I'm eating, if I'm cooking it, I know what's in it, and there's no preservatives. It's usually fresh every day. Yeah, yeah, I we don't play with coming. that. Yeah, a lot what's of your... vegetables. Yeah, I'm yeah, I love a lot of that. vegetables. I go through my fast every year, which is just cutting out meat and eggs and a lot of different things that aren't good for us, like sugar and stuff like that. And it really helped with my weight because I lost about 130 pounds altogether. From the it fat? was for 55 days, oh. but you don't starve yourself. You just no. cut out certain food, and you can eat but they like you to eat in the morning at night. And basically a fast is just something that prepares your body to do with less than you than you indulge in. Listen, yeah. those of us who practice certain religions, like I'm gonna say the Greek Orthodox religion, yeah. I do that fast often. Right. And it just, it's just a cleanse, you're eating. It's right. just, you're not eating All meat, that you other can have beans, yes. and lots of alternatives. Lots of beans, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So is your diet primarily veggie-based? It right is, now? but I go to the fowl. I go to the fam. In any language, it's the same thing. I love chicken and, yeah. you know, yeah, but I don't eat a lot of red meats. But okay. when I do, it's oxtail. It's oxtail. Okay, mm. so beautiful segue for me mm. because, you know, Liberty, at the end of the show, yeah. I head to a kitchen and yeah. I try to replica your meal. Okay. So what, am I going to replica oxtail? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I've never made that before. Oh, so it's I'm super so excited. good. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Okay, so this is your own recipe that you're yeah. giving us. Yeah, yeah, okay. that I gave did in coordination with Chef Selwyn. Okay, yes. so Chef Selwyn, he's somebody who you've worked with in the past? Or? I have. I do a lot of functions, a lot of galas, a lot of big gigs. And whenever I go, there he is. I'm like, yes, good <laughs> food. <laughs> and he's at all different kinds of events. So okay. it's amazing. And I, For me, it's an honor to work with somebody like that. Oh, he's amazing. I'm still learning in the kitchen. Yeah. Is there something you're working on right now? I am. I'm working on a new album. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing very well on it. I'm having a good time with it. Are you going to so, release it like on Spotify? or what's Yes, the absolutely. I'm okay. going to release it on Spotify. It probably won't be, it'll be late spring, early mm -hmm. summer that it's coming out. But okay. most of the stuff are already done and I'm fasting again coming up. So I'll have the new image that I really want by by that time. You know, okay. it's important to what me. What can we expect from the album? Uh, R&B, soul, um, neo soul, okay. some jazz. Yeah. yeah Any collabs jazz. on there? I yeah. am. I'm working on that right now. I have a couple of people in mind. Undercover? Undercover. I okay. have to. Um, <laughs> you got Happy Samhain to sing. <laughs> to There's only 21 candles. Happy birthday, dear oh, Liberty. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Wow. She has one and boyfriend. Many more. <laughs> mm, I love that candle wax it's taste. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Happy birthday and anything yes, you wish for you. may it come true. Thank you. And thank you for being my special thank guest Thank you today. so much. I wish to go back to Greece again. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Mwah. After the commercial break, we're heading to the kitchen to make Liberty Silver's oxtail. Ooh, and Danielle is going to open ooh, up thank you. around the world we are ready to cook and our special guest chef of the day is chef Sunlit. i'm so happy to be working with you today and it's such a pleasure to learn from you because i know you've done a lot of stuff okay so today as you know we are making liberty silver's oxtail right and i'm very fortunate i'm so grateful to be learning from you a little bit about oxtail because i'm not embarrassed to say i actually don't know anything about oxtail well oxtail is one of those meat that um in the old days, they considered throwaway, right? Okay. So it was the leftover. So as a people of Caribbean or African American, Canadian, um, we got the leftovers. Okay. You know, so we got the tails, we got the heads, the guts, whatever we call half full now, right? And um, with the wings, or whatever it is. So we had to be very inventive in making sure that we maximize the flavor and all of that stuff from what we got. Okay. You look at chicken wings today, right? It's Good on everybody's point. menu. Yes. Before in the old days, uh, it, it's for the pigs, right? right? You know, our chicken stock, right? So um, it's the same thing with oxtail. Okay. Now oxtail, $7 a pound, you know, you can get a nice steak for that. Yeah. So it shows you how stuff evolve or whatever because of the flavor and all that. So today we're gonna do some 
oxtail. Okay. And, and once so, you try it, right? I, I believe you. I'm put, yeah. I have faith in you that yeah, yeah. I'm going to fall in love. Yeah, we're going to do it so that it's fall off the bone goodness. Okay. Melt in oh, your mouth, in your you mouth. know, okay. and okay. it causes you to go, whoop -a, whoop -a. <laughs> we, we love that. Yeah, yeah there we yeah. are, right? So um, what we did is marinate it already for okay. 24 hours okay. overnight. So we'll show you the seasoning that goes in there that you can get from the recipes. Okay. But to make sure that we have all the good flavors yeah. and all that we proceed to marinate okay. and all that. You and know? is this the secret really behind oxtail? Because we were talking about earlier, so you have to get innovative, right? Mm -hmm. So you took the pieces, for example, the tail of the ox, and this is where all the goodness and specialty is? Right, right. Okay, okay. Right. so this is the magic. And I mean, people used to make it into soup, you know, oh, okay. as, as all that. But I mean, it's a phenomenal meal. Okay. And we reached a point now where we're actually doing um, oxtail sliders. Oxtail slider. Oh, so, like a burger. Yeah, oh like little God. burger, boneless okay. oxtail, you know, sliders. And, uh, Do you have that in here? Yeah. No, not that. Okay. Well, we have the oxtail recipe in there. Okay, the, okay perfect. Right. So we can yeah. find this on Amazon and check out your oxtail recipe. Uh, yeah, of course. So there. we can get it from theartofcatering.com. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So today we're going to focus on making Liberty Silver's oxtail, right. courtesy you of know. Chef Selwyn. So this has been marinated for 24 hours. Some yeah, more so put into here. Okay. now we're going to go and sear it. Okay. Put a nice sear on the, on the meat and get I'm it to, to simmer. Car oxtail does take uh, two and a half, three hours, right? Okay. Uh, so, okay, so we'll play some cards in between. Of okay, course. Perfect. Okay. And I mean, some people just put it in the pot as a stew and get it going. But ah. for us, the sear is the key. Because you, get, uh, you sear the meat and then you get it to fall off without falling apart. So the sear is going to give it a nice, um, you sear the hedges like anything else, right? Okay, so we're waiting till the oil is hot. Right. So we you add know. it in, okay. I learned that from Chef Russell. Because I would put it in before the oil is hot. That doesn't yeah, work. but you listen to the sizzle. Yeah. Right, you know? Okay. So you hear in your sizzle. Okay. And that's how you know you're cooking. Okay. So we didn't use a lot of oil in the pan because we're just looking to... Uh, we're not trying to fry it, you know. Okay. We're just trying to get that good sear okay. on the head of it. Yeah, you're going to be happy with this. This is a wonderful... I'm excited and, um, because right now it's, I can smell it. Right. It's got some strong seasoning in there. And I mean, like everything else, you know, I mean, a lot of cooks, it's just salt and pepper. Yep. But I mean, salt and pepper don't do it justice for this stuff, you know? Okay. So you gotta get um, your thyme, your berries, and all of that good stuff in there. Okay. You can literally smell it, right? Yeah, I can smell it. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So, so how uh, long are we simmering here for? Yeah, you're searing it and, and until you get oh. a nice crust, you know, so a little bit more on each side. Okay. You get a nice crust on each side. So I would say at least two minutes on each side. Oh, pretty good. Okay. about a liter of water in there because it's going to take a while okay. and we just let that have a, a bit of a simmer. Okay. So we're adding a liter of water once it's in the pot? Yeah, you might need to add a little bit. Or beef stock. You or know? beef stock, okay. Oh, yeah, just beef for stock. some flavor, chef? Right. And then let it, um, but water is good because it's nicely seasoned. Oh, that's right. right. It's very yeah. We don't want too heavy. Okay. So that's staying for three hours. Yeah. Okay. And we'll come back and sort it out. So we're going to put a lid on it. Okay. And just let it stay there and get happy. Okay. Stay there and get happy. I like <laughs> that. When we return, we're going to see the continuation and then the ending. And then, of course, we've got a celebrity star foodie guest. Stay here. More to come. After all that hard work, Chef, yeah. during the commercial break, now what are our final touches here? Yeah, thyme is your friend, so I love fresh thyme, you know, like I like try not to cook anything without it. Okay. Like, uh, smell that. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so that's just to finish off. So mm. we're going to go over here and check. Um, okay. We know that it's um, cooked. So we've been cooking here for three hours. Yeah. 
And as you can see, there it is, you know. Wow. So at least we know that it's nice and tender, see, fork tender. So we're just gonna add um, our carrots and beans. Okay, perfect. Um, to it. Perfect, so. Yeah, just add that okay. in there. Some carrots. Gonna add our carrots. And uh, of course, some thyme, mm -hmm. fresh thyme. And um, just a little top up, a little seasoning to make sure that we're good. Okay. Yeah. And then 10 minutes later, we will have our oxtail ready You'll to have go. your oxtail ready to go. This is actually like a side dish for oxtail. Yeah. Right, you know, like, so I mean, it's a vegetable. So I mean, you know, we have, Wonderful. these days we're gonna make sure you eat healthy. Yes. So as and long as it's a little bit of green. A little bit of green, it's so popular in the right. Mediterranean kitchen, but you told me about another way to make yeah. it. Well, with these guys, you know, a lot of people don't like okra because they tend to be a little slimy if they're overcooked and stuff. So if I boil them, it's just in for a couple of minutes and out so that okay. it's still al dente and they don't release that. Or we fry them. So okay. today I'm going to deep fry them. Okay, and that I shows you that it doesn't get all mushy and, and stuff. Yeah. Right, just for a few minutes, right, Chef? Yeah, just a few minutes. Okay. And then we're going to get into our final plating mm -hmm. once those are ready. Yeah, so just a few minutes for, the, for these guys. And you don't really want to overcook them, you see? This is just our own little mix. Okay. There you go. And that's it. That smells delicious. <laughs> yeah. The seasoning. So there's your green. Right, so we have a bit of uh, rice and peas. Okay. And see with uh, the carrots and beans that we had in there a little bit after. So here for our final plate, we have deep fried okra, which was really just a couple minutes, not right. too bad, right? Uh, we have, looks like wild brown rice with peas and our oxtail with our lima beans and carrots. So just a little bit of garnish on top. Okay, fresh and, onion. Um, yeah, green onions. Okay, I, want, yeah. I hope Liberty Silver likes what we've done because we really tried really hard. I'm, I know I'm exhausted from all the work. Look at that. <laughs> nice. You know you're my favorite chef of all time. <laughs> Does yours usually look like this, Liberty? Uh, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> it's just the basic. I just, the okay. rice and the meat, they just, you know. But the most important is if it, it tastes like yours. Absolutely, yes. but I know it will. It's gorgeous. Look at it. Okay. My mouth was watering from back. Oh, back wow. Back. Cutlery. Okay. I'm a sous chef today. Sous chef. Today. Yeah, and I forgot to tell you what's, what's the secret ingredients in all of this meal. Are you putting me to the test? Because I don't remember. No, it wasn't secret ingredient. No. No. Love. Okay, dive in. Oh, and I'd like to thank you both for joining me today thank on you. Star Foodies. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with both of you. <laughs> From Wonderful. our kitchen and our family to yours, Star Foodies watching at home. Remember, we are all Star Foodies at heart, so we want you to eat well. Say for us, baby. I do. My, uh, I've been in so many places in my life and times. I sung a lot of songs. I made some bad rhymes. I've acted out my life in stages with 10,000 people watching. But we're alone now, and I'm eating this oxtail with you. Yeah. Yeah.